So I work on deep sea ecosystems, and these are ecosystems that exist at about a kilometre down. Now, if you imagine that in terms of a sky tower, that's basically one sky tower with another sky tower and another sky tower on top of that. So if you can imagine three sky towers, then that's the sort of depth we're talking about here. And the focus of these are the fish called orange ruffy. And we fish for orange ruffy, and we've been doing that for about 30 years. And over that time, we've reduced most of the population of orange ruffy down to about 20% of what originally was. What I'm interested in trying to work on is if we've taken away 80% of the orange ruffy, what's now happened to the things that the orange ruffy used to eat? Are there more of them? Are there less of them? Um, what's eating them? When you um, alter an ecosystem, ecosystems are made up of, of parts. And if you want an analogy, if you think of a Jenga pile, the game of Jenga, where you've got all the little blocks, if you imagine that your ecosystem is the Jenga, you can take away a certain amount of blocks and it'll stay working. You take one too many out, the ecosystem collapses. And what we don't know at the moment is how much can we affect that ecosystem before a whole thing goes kaboom. So orange ruffy is obviously not the only thing that's down there. There are other fish species, squid species, lots of other things. And they all interact, and we try to work out how they interact. Basically what we find is that when you compare the diets of the, different, the other fish around, there's nothing there that can really obviously take the place of orange ruffy. They're all quite separate with what they eat. So at the moment, we don't really know what could possibly take the place or what could be taking advantage of all this food that's now there that the orange ruffy is not eating.